Hey everybody, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Now today we're gonna to look at the topic, which version of the Bible should I purchase and read? Which one should I purchase and read? A very important topic. We'll get to that in just a few seconds here. Before we do, I wanna encourage you to go over to my website. It's beresolute.org, beresolute.org. While you're over there, I want you to pick up a free resource that I think would help you to grow in your faith. It is entitled The Men's Daily Devo. So if you're a guy out there looking to grow in your faith, you're looking for some simple daily methodology to get you into reading God's word, I've got a way for you. That Daily Devo right there is short, sweet, to the point. It is done in video, audio, and written formats. You can pick it up every day, and I'm just reading through the Bible for guys like you. I make it short, sweet, and to the point. It's always applicable to life as men, I want to encourage you to pick it up today, or you can just hit the subscribe button below if you're watching this video on YouTube. And with that, let's dive into our topic for today, which is which version of the Bible should I purchase and read? So if you were to walk into a bookstore today to pick out a Bible, you're going to be overwhelmed. You're immediately going to be overwhelmed because you haven't walked into a bookstore in years. <laughs> Number two, you're going to be overwhelmed because when you go over to the religious section to pick out a Bible for personal reading, you're going to discover that there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different versions of the Bible. And you're going to have this thought. You're going to think to yourself, can't these Christians get this thing figured out. And I want you to know this, is that there are so many translations there into the English language simply because the Bible wasn't originally written in English. The original languages of the Bible are Hebrew and Greek. In fact, the Old Testament was written in ancient Hebrew and the New Testament written in ancient Greek. Therefore, if you want to be able to read the Bible, you're either going to have to learn Hebrew or Greek so that you can be able to extract the language or you're just gonna to have to pick up a good English translation of the Bible. But it still doesn't explain why there are so many English translations. And the predominant reason for this is that when culture changes, so must the language. When culture changes, so must the language. That's why there are so many different versions. For example, who would have ever thought that selfie would ever become a word? But it did. It did because culture changed. And when the culture changed, our behavior changed. And when our behavior changed, our language changed. That's why there's so many different versions of the English Bible, because culture's changed a lot and it changes fast. Therefore, our language must adapt. But there's also another factor that comes into play, and it's the methodology that a translator must use to translate the text, their methodology. And there are basically three different methodologies that a translator or translators must use to arrive at an English version, a consistent English version. And these three approaches are called the word for word, thought for thought, and the paraphrase. Word for word, thought for thought, and paraphrase. Now, when a translator is translating the Bible, they have to use a consistent method. And these methods are the three that they consistently use. And today, I'm going to describe the first two in detail because the third is going to describe itself. And if you're trying to pick out a Bible to purchase and read, you're probably going to want to know this because it's going to help you to choose the best Bible to read for you. So the first approach is called the word-for-word -word approach. The technical name for this approach is called the formal equivalent and it is a method that translates the Bible kind of like it states, basically, formally, one word at a time. And there are a few translations that use this approach. You're going to see their little acronyms on the side or the inside of the Bibles. There are versions like the NASB, which stands for New American Standard Bible, or the RSV, which is the Revised Standard Bible, or the ESV, which is the English Standard Version. And you got to know this. There are certain strengths to using this methodology that make it a great Bible to read, such as the translator is going to rely greater on that original text in translation. They're going to do less interpretation. They're assuming that you're going to use it for in-depth study, and they're going to try to be more precise. But you need to know that there are also weaknesses to getting this kind of a version. 
because a word-for-word -word or formal equivalent translation can kind of read awkward at times. It requires a little bit more effort to interpret it. It can actually be difficult for like a youth or a new Christian to read. And sometimes this results in readers reaching a wrong conclusion, which will impact their application. Now, second, you have the thought for thought translation. The thought for thought translation, the technical name is the functional equivalent. And it is a method that translates the Bible, usually a few words or a phrase at a time. And there are a few translations of the Bible that use this approach. And you're going to see their acronyms on the side of the Bible as well. They are versions like the uh, New International Version, NIV, or the NLT, New Living Translation. And I want you to know that there are strengths of this approach as well. For example, it's easier to read. It conveys the meaning a little bit better. It's great for public consumption and reading. And trained scholars do some of that interpreting for you. Now, there are weaknesses of this approach. It requires less study of you. It's not as beneficial for like a word study. And it often reads in longer sentences because of the need to kind of explain these technical biblical terms that came from Hebrew and Greek. And third and finally, you have what is known as the paraphrase. And it's just simply that. It's a paraphrase. It's usually poetic in form. Uh, it's not so helpful for study, and honestly, I wouldn't recommend purchasing a paraphrase, uh, even though I do have a couple of copies on my shelf. I hardly ever pick them up anymore. Those are the three. There you have it. Just three very simple methods to translating the Bible. And I want you to know this. It's easy in the beginning just to pick up, I would say, a thought-for-thought version, like the NIV. It's just easy to read. It gets you into God's Word and reading it on a regular basis because I want you to know this. I do read from the ESV. I read from it because I like to interpret. And the reason that I do this is I want to draw out the meaning as much as I can from that original text in hoping that you pick up some great application. But you know what my preference is for you? Is to pick up one that you're actually going to read. Literally, that's the best thing you can do, is actually purchase a Bible, get it in your hands, and crack that thing open and read it on a regular basis. And remember, you can always do this with me on a daily basis using the Daily Devo online right at my website at beresolute.org. With that, I hope this has helped you out today. I hope it gives you some direction. Go get a Bible, purchase it, and then read it, because there's nothing worse than a Bible that never gets opened. Transformation doesn't happen. What we're trying to do is get to know the God of the Bible who wrote it for us so that we can know Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this has blessed you. If it has, share it with someone you know, and I'll see you right back here next time.